what up everyone welcome back to the channel jamal here and in today's video i'm going to be showing you how you can get started with the cucumber framework scenario outline so the scenario outline keyword can be used to run the same scenario multiple times with different combination of values so this is what we're going to be using today so what we're going to be doing is taking a look at these two scenarios so given there is 12 cucumbers when i eat five cucumbers then i should have seven cucumbers in the next scenario um, eat five out of the 20 it's given that i have 20 cucumbers when i eat five i should have 15 etc etc so what we're going to do is collapse these two similar scenarios and put them in a scenario outline instead of having these two expanded scenarios we can compact it and make it reduce and look nice like this so with the examples you can see that this is how you set them up um, the scenario outline is run once for each row in the example section and you can use these delimited parameters to store your values and get your thing parameterized so enough of the yapping what we're going to do is just hop back into the eclipse and we're going to get this tested and pretty much set it up just like what we have here on the example page um, but we're going to be using our own website and get going so let's hop into it all right so what i'm going to do is just launch eclipse and we're going to continue with our gherkin testing project I'm just gonna close this previous project I've been working on. So what I'm gonna do is hop over to my feature file and I already have it open. So we're gonna continue where we add some other scenarios. So in here I have a two scenarios in my feature currently. The user clicks on the lust of paper and, and selects the silly key peak. And I also have another one just using the debug tag and pretty much the same scenario. So what we're gonna do is we add a third scenario and this is gonna be a scenario outline. So I'm just gonna put scenario outline, give it a number of three. And in this testing, we're gonna say the user clicks each category on the home page. All right, so that's gonna be our test for today. So I'm just gonna launch that website. So we get back on shop.anguilaplus.com. So this is the home page. So once we're here, we're gonna click each of these categories. So the canvas, the luster, and the acrylic prints. So that's what our test case is about today. So I'm just gonna reorganize and get my screen set up nicely. So there we go. I'm gonna start off by saying, given the users on the home page. Next, we're gonna say when the user clicks the category, and then we're gonna use the category tags. So this is what we're gonna be using to input our values from our, our example table. All right, so next what we're gonna do is say, then the page breadcrumbs displays, and we're gonna end with the title tags. Next, I'm just gonna start building my examples table. So what it's gonna do is add this pipe and then say category, this pipe symbol, and then title piper, okay? So that's how you're supposed to set it up. And now, for the category, I'm just gonna go back to the home page and we have canvas, luster, and acrylic. So I'm just going to go and inspect this page and just grab these texts. So we have canvas print. The next one is luster paper. And then we have acrylic prints all right so i'm just going to add these um, titles in my table so i'm just going to say canvas print next is the title so for the title what we're going to do is simply just click on this say the canvas prints and we're just going to copy this breadcrumb title at the top and it says canvas prints next we have the lust of paper I'm just gonna put lust of paper here. All right, that looks good. Next, we're just gonna add the acrylic prints and then add the acrylic print type, acrylic prints title. Okay, just give us some space, make sure your format and look good. And I think we should be ready to go. So now we're just gonna make sure all these pages look alike. So acrylic prints, so we have lust of prints, acrylic prints. What you wanna do is just simply click save now we have these yellow indicators letting us know that our step definition is not found. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna comment these two scenarios at the top and then I'm gonna click save again. All right, now we reappeared. So this is letting us know that we do not have these step definitions created. So what I'm gonna do is just simply click run as and run as a cucumber feature. But now it's showing me that I have an error. So it's showing me that my path has been changed. So I'm gonna to go to the feature, I'm gonna to go to run as, run configuration, and under the feature path, I'm just gonna make sure that everything looks up to date, make sure my feature is where it's supposed to. So 
what I'm gonna do is, yep, now it's on the git folder. So I'm just gonna have to update my feature path. So I'm just gonna copy my new location. And what I'm gonna do is head back over to the feature, run, run configuration. And what I'm gonna do is update that feature path and add my slash. Okay, that looks good. So now everything is good. And I'm gonna hit apply, hit close. I'm just gonna clear the console. And if I run as a cucumber feature now, everything should run. All right, there we go. So the browser launched. So now we have our statements brought back that look good. Um, we do have some exception thrown at the top. It ran the given statement since we already have that created. So it just try to do some work, but um, you can see that there, there was some nulls on the other steps, right? Okay, so that's why that's fine. But what we want to do is pretty much scroll down and what we want to do is copy our new step definitions. This is what we need. And what you want to do is just copy and then you want to put this inside of your step definitions. So I have it in com Jamal step defs. I'm just going to paste it, paste it towards the bottom. That looks good. I'm just going to get rid of these generic statements. All right, that looks good. So what I'm going to do is just get my screens resized so I can get ready for my scripting and capturing some of these elements. All right, so I have my feature file at the bottom, step definition to the top, so I'm ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is start defining a new element. So I'm going to call this category canvas prints. And this is equal to driver.find element. I'm going to use by that x path. Okay, that looks good. And to speed things up, I'm just going to copy this and paste it into my other similar categories. So the luster and as well as the acrylic. And now what I'm going to do is just hop over to my Google. I'm going to inspect and put my pointer over the canvas. I'm just going to get that X path for that. So I'm just going to paste it in here. All right, next, I'm just going to do this for the other two for the luster paper and the acrylic. So I'm just going to speed through this real quick. It's just the same process. I'm just going to copy the X path and paste them in. All right, now that we have all of our category elements defined, what we're going to do is just going to copy the category canvas prints add the dot click um, function to it. All right, next, I'm going to do this as well for the luster. Just copy and dot click. And I'm going to do this for the acrylic. All right, each of my methods now are clicking on each of these elements, so that looks good. Next, we're going to work on the breadcrumbs. So, what I'm going to do is create a new element, and I'm going to call this element breadcrumb canvas. And this is going to be equal to driver.find element. And I'm going to say by that x path. And again, I'm just going to copy this into the other statements as well. So what I'm going to do is copy the X path and then I'm just going to paste it in my element. All right. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the luster paper. I'm going to inspect it. And since it's in the same position and we're using X path, I'm thinking the X path may be the same. So I'm just going to paste it and let's see. All right. So it is the same. So, yep, it's in the same position. So these X paths are definitely the same. So what I'm just going to do is just scroll down towards the bottom and I'm going to paste that X path right there as well. And now that looks good. Now that I have that, what I'm just going to say is breadcrumb that is displayed. And that's just going to make sure that these are in fact displayed. And next I could just add a simple asserts um, true statement. And we're just going to import my assert true statement as well. And then I can just say canvas page displayed. And then I can set the other parameter as true. Okay. And we can copy and paste this for the other as well. So I'm just going to speed through this really quick. All right. Everything looks good now. So now I'm just going to be ready to do our test. So given the users on the home page, that's where we're currently at now. When the user clicks the category, so you're going to click the canvas, the luster, and the acrylic, each of these under the category section. And then the page breadcrumb displays, we have the title, canvas, luster paper, and acrylic print. Okay. And what I'm going to do is simply click right click and do run as, and I'm just going to do a JUnit test. 
All right, everything launched. Wow, that was really, really quick. So everything just ran. The browser didn't close. That means my after step is probably disabled, but that's the, the beauty of that scenario outline. It did three scenarios in just one scenario. It just keeps everything nice and compact for you. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just simply add some weights after these clicks so we can run that test again and we can see um, these the three scenarios being run because it ran really quick the first time. So I'm just gonna slow it down a little bit. So it may take a little longer, but we can actually see it. Open up my hooks class. And in here, what I'm gonna do is I have my before. So inside my before annotation, all it's just doing is setting the driver for me. I have some of these other steps disabled. So I'm just gonna uncomment my after. So after the, the test run, what it needs to do is just quit the driver and then restart again and then fire up a new driver. So let's see what happens. I'm just gonna click run, run as, uh, run as a JUnit test. All right, so it launched. So now we're on the canvas page, we see the weights working. And now we have an exception, okay? So we have two failed, one pass. So the second scenarios didn't run. We have an issue with the session ID is no. So something with the driver is happening. So let's take a look at that. What I'm gonna do real quick is just make sure that the after method is working. All right, now that we added back the after class, that's gonna start to act a little funky. What I'm gonna do is uncomment my first test scenario. And I'm just gonna change this to test two. And I'm just gonna run as a JUnit test and let's see, let's see what happens this time. So it's launched running we got to the silly peak print that's what that scenario wanted and it closed the browser okay so our hooks and everything is running ex how we expected but now that we're using the scenario outline and the browser is closing and relaunching I have to add some more logic so I'm just gonna say if driver equal null um, build a driver else just use the existing driver Next, in the after class, what I'm gonna do is add another if statement as well. So in here, I'm just gonna say if driver is equal null, let's say return, get out of this method. If not, quit the, the driver and set the driver to null. All right, so that's what that's gonna do. And I'm gonna hop over to my driver manager and I'm gonna take out this logic since my hooks is already doing this for me. And I'm just gonna format this a little better. All right, everything looks good. And I'm just gonna click save. All right, so with those changes, what I'm gonna do is change my tag to test two and give the scenario outline another run and let's see what happened. All right, so the first scenario ran. Now we're on the luster paper, so that's good. And lastly, we're on the acrylic prints. So everything is running exactly. We did not get that exception, which is good. And now we have our pass. It took about 20 seconds for this to execute. But that's how you can set up your scenario outline and that's the beauty of the scenario outline so there you have it everyone that's how you can get started with the scenario outline and this is one of the examples we just did in my next video i'm going to touch base a little bit on the document strings and set up a scenario outline with that as well but that's pretty much it uh, what i'm going to do right now is just simply take out these weights fire up the test again and that's how you can get set up with your scenario outline using your cucumber framework making sure um making these slight edits and changes to your hooks as well just to accommodate for the multiple runs and setup so if you guys found this video helpful please feel free to smash the like button subscribe to the channel and i'll see y'all in another video